Good morning everybody, welcome to a vlog. I'm starting in the usual spot, just sat doing some work. It's nine o'clock on Monday morning. I'm just waiting for the cleaner to get here. Um, I keep forgetting to give her a bloody key. So today I'm gonna give her a key so I don't have to be in when she gets here. And then I'm gonna go to Shoreditch House do some work up and upload a video um that's like the only i know i keep saying this about the wi-fi but i'm actually now really enjoying not having wi-fi in a weird way because it makes you work really really productively when you can actually work and it doesn't mean i'm just sat really early on my laptop like doing nothing for hours um so i've gotten quite into a no wi-fi life i've got my little hair bubble in the top of my head to make my hair go curly um and yeah feeling really good actually um, what busy week? I'm just gonna like get a really big work plan in. If it's work's really busy at the moment, and I feel quite um, overwhelmed with it all because it's lots of like bitty things at the moment. So I just need to get my head into it, which I'm gonna do when I get to Shoreditch House and just whoomph, plug in, get everything sorted out. Um, but yeah, I'm feeling really good. I um, I've got a couple of bits to shave from under the stories this morning. Actually, I'm wearing them both today, so I'm gonna show you them before I go out. I'm gonna show you in the next 15 minutes, in fact, so I can do it before the cleaner arrives, um, which is part of the monthly sponsorship I'm doing with them at the moment. I know last, last month was like the purple jumper and things, and there's um, two items this month, um, which I'm gonna show you. And what else? It's kind of about it at the moment to share with you in this lovely, lovely morning. It is actually a lovely morning as well. Oh, today actually I'm going, I'm working this morning and then going to, um, <clears throat> going to Lucian Freud um, exhibition. He's got a portrait exhibition at the Royal Academy. Last, The last big one they had there was the Anthony Gormley one and it was amazing. Um, so I got tickets for that at quarter past one. So I'm gonna go to that, which I'm really, really looking forward to because um, I'm quite a fan of Lucian Freud, although I don't really know very much about him at all. So maybe I'll, I might buy like a nice book as well at the end so I can have a read through all of that. Um, and yeah, I quite like the idea of like getting a book every time you go to an exhibition. And, just living in this home of culture and wonderfulness. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the plan today, um, which is all going to be good. Um, and yeah, I've got a nice, nice day here today. I'm just, I'm just literally halfway through writing a blog post. So I'm gonna get my head down. It's gonna take me five more minutes. Show you what I'm wearing today. Show you the two under the stories pieces. And then I'm gonna go to Shortage House and I'll also take my hair down so I don't look, oh my God, don't look like that. <laughs> just thought I'd show you how this is all looking. And a lovely morning light. I like how the lamp looks, it looks, when it's on it looks like a jellyfish I think. When it's off it looks like a mushroom. And then with the plant it's kind of like a little woodland themed corner. Very much like it. Okay, the first piece from Under the Stories is just this long sleeve t-shirt. So I have three long sleeve white tops in my collection. Um, I'm literally wearing them every single day at the moment, so they're like in constant rotation through the wash. This one, this one, so the downside of this one is it doesn't have the nice cuffs, which the Uniqlo one has, which I like because then when you've pulled them down, oh look how I scratched my wrist, if you pull them down under your jumper, you can you get to see the cuff, which is a nice detail. But the plus side of this one is that it isn't as oversized and it's a much that the arms are a lot skinnier, so it is more comfortable to layer. The, um, the Uniqlo one I have, I wouldn't be able to layer up under a skinny jumper, whereas this one you definitely can. And again, it's got the really nice neckline, so you get to see that under a jumper. And I really like how this one looks just on its own as well, like not worn as a layering piece, but obviously at the moment it's cold, so it's a t-shirt's mostly a layering piece for this time of year. Um, but yeah, I've been wearing it absolutely low since I got it. The jeans are under the stories too, but the, these are part of testing basics. They weren't sent to me and they're not part of this sponsorship. I bought these, but I thought maybe you guys might ask. Um, but yeah, if you can just, if you're after a new pair of jeans, just hold off buying any until I've done this video, um, just so that I can properly review them all. But I, I'll leave a link for them in case you are interested, but the video should only be about two weeks away. Um, so yeah, there's this, and then the other piece is a cardigan. Oh, I really like this cardigan. So I didn't have an oat mealy kind of um, coloured cardigan. I've got black ones, I've got a cream one, both from Under the Stories, a navy one from Joseph, um, and two like skinny black ones and chunky black ones. 
but I didn't have an oatmeal one. And this, I really like the crop length of them. And other stories do really good cardigans. I've got quite a few from them and they've all lasted really well and everything. Um, I'm actually gonna wear this over my shoulders over a blazer today and not like this, but um, yeah, I really, really like it. It's a really nice fit. It looks scratchy, but it honestly isn't at all. It looks that kind of scratchy wool, but it's super comfortable and actually really soft. So not scratchy in the slightest. And I just really like the color. It looks great with this whole outfit actually, but um, like I said, I'm gonna show you, I'll show you how I'm styling it today now. And then I've got on my Arquette black blazer and then the knit over my shoulders like this. I really love the knit over the shoulders look and it's actually super practical because it's just like wearing a scarf basically, but with extra warmth at the back. And I think it looks really good. The tip if you're doing it with a cardigan is to do up a button on the cardigan because if you don't, it sits really wide over the shoulders and looks more like a cape. Um, which doesn't look as, just doesn't look as nice basically. Um, but I like, I'm really enjoying this colour knit with doing this style over a black blazer. I think it breaks up and out really nicely. And then I'm just gonna have another day <laughs> trying to break in these monsters, my um, Pro Enza shoes from Farfetch. We shall see how we get on. Cause I've not worn them for like, I haven't worn them for a week now. When I put them on again, I'm like, yeah, super comfy. These feel absolutely fine. And I'm, I'll let you know how I get on at the end of the day with them. And we go to Boots today. I need to get some bits and bobs and try pick up some of the heel backs. Um, lots of you commented recommending different ones. So I'm gonna um, try get some and see if that helps me along because I just wanna be able to wear them every day. Um, but yeah, this is today's look, I think handbag wise. Take my Sophie Hume bolt bag, which I've gotten really into wearing again. I've been wearing this bag the most of all my bags recently. Some great filming quality going on here. Um, but I've shortened the strap so I can wear it on one shoulder as opposed to crossbody, which I really like. So this is me today. I just obviously will sort my hair out. Hey guys, it's um, Wednesday. I can't remember the last time. No, it's Tuesday. I only vlogged yesterday. I've got two cold sores, as you can see. Ugh. I know it's because I was run down. Like you guys know, I lost my voice through the week. I have a spot here. And then I've had like my boozy birthday weekend. And now I'm just, I've got to run myself down too much. So I have a cold, two cold sores. I didn't feel either of them coming as well. People who get cold sores will know normally you get the tingle. But then if you put some stuff on them, it normally stops it. I didn't get a tingle for either of them. Just suddenly like, went like this and was like, oh God, bloody cold sores. So that's attractive. Um, but yeah, I don't actually feel too run down, but like even one cold sore is always a sign that my body is like, please. Whereas two, my body is like, please, listen. Um, so I've had, this morning I um, went into Gap for a work thing, which is really interesting actually. Got this lovely jumper, which I'll include in my monthly fashion thing for the end of the month. And then I went to the gym, and then I am home, and I'm staying home all afternoon. I was meant to be going to Laura's tonight to catch up with her, and I cancelled on her, which I hate doing. I can very, 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 very rarely cancel stuff. Um, but I just need time at home to get on with some bloody work. Um, I've got so much on. It's amazing, but like, wow. Lots and lots, um, and also trying to vlog, and I'm very conscious that this, this vlog's probably going to be entirely in my flat, with me not leaving the flat. Um, although tomorrow I'm out and about. Again, I'm just going to quickly talk to you about the book I'm reading at the moment. Let's sit down in our usual spot. So I finished The Unbearable Lights of Being, and now I'm halfway through Three Women by Lisa Taddeo, which was one that I felt like a lot of people talk about on Instagram. And the premise is that this woman, Lisa Taddeo, Taddeo, honey my hair, she spent 10 years, was it 10 years? A long time, I don't know why I've got 10 years in my head, but a long time, researching women and their sex lives, basically. Their sexuality, their relationships, yeah. And, and there's three main characters within this and it's meant to be almost like a memoir from each of them. It reads entirely like a fiction. So I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I'm constantly reminding myself like, this isn't a fiction, but she, it's like she's fictionalized it, the way she's telling the story. Um, it's quite, it's interesting. And like, I understand why lots of people have been talking about it. I am not overly enjoying it. I'm not like, um, it, I don't think it will ruin anything to say. Let me just check what the, 
What the blurb? No, okay, it's on the blurb. So, so there's three women, the themes between them are one is in a marriage with a husband who doesn't want to have sex with her. Second is in a relationship, is a woman who's in court over a relationship previously with an old teacher. And the third is a woman who's in a relationship who husband likes to watch her have sex with other men. So those are the three themes. Um, I don't know how to describe, I don't know how to describe what I'm reading really. I think what I'm getting tripped up on is the fact they're not characters. And like the introduction explains that like names have been changed and blah blah blah. But it feels like I'm completely getting lost in the fact that this is meant to be documented. This is a book that's come off the back of so much practical research and following real people's lives. I'm losing that a bit, which kind of feels like a shame because then the story that you're telling, which are all three really interesting viewpoints, seem less important in certain ways because it just doesn't, I just feel like I'm reading a fiction, not because they're disbelievable or anything like that. It's just the way of writing. I hope I've done a good, if anyone's reading it, please comment in the comments about what you think about it and if that description makes sense. Anyway, that's the book I'm currently on and I'm just, like I said, sat working, working. The Lucian Freud exhibition was really, really good. I recommend going to that. It was bloody heaving to say it was a Monday as well. It was so busy. Sit my teeth. Mm. Oh, I've let it go a tiny bit too cold. Mm. Just past the good point, just past the prime bit. Mm -mm. Mm. Um, what was I saying? I'm just working. I'm also going to book Tokyo. I'm going to book my flights. I'm not booking a hotel yet. I'm torn between hotel or Airbnb because some of the Airbnbs are beautiful. Because I'm going to be there on my own. Pros of having a hotel are that you. Well, it's always a pro having to tell you don't have to make your own bed. Um, you can get like room service if I was like really jet lagged and didn't want to go out. There's always going to be room service available and things. But often when I'm traveling alone, it's really nice being in an Airbnb because you can make it feel like home. And if I've got work to do, I'm not working in uh, just one hotel room on the sat on the bed or whatever. You get more space. And some of the Airbnbs in Tokyo are beautiful. So I'm kind of erring towards going for an Airbnb. But we'll see. Um, and yeah, that's all I want to update you on. I feel like shit because of cold sores. Um, they're like the, one of the only things that make me feel really, really self-conscious. Like I don't even really want to be vlogging. And I think, again, if anyone who gets them will understand, they're not that obvious a lot of the time. Like, I actually just think it looks like I've had lip injections or something and, and my lips are kind of bumpy in two places. But they're so painful. Like, you can just feel them all the time. So it makes you constantly aware of them because you can't stop thinking about the fact you can feel them. It's so annoying. But hopefully it'll, they'll be gone by the end of the week. Bloody cold sauce. And like I've been taking the lysine stuff as well, doing all the stuff to prevent them. But ultimately I think when I'm run down, it's my body's just, it's where my immune system drops to be able to keep that virus at bay. So I can't stop them. No matter how much to try and um, med... What's the word if you try to fight something with med medicine? If I try to medicate it? That is the word, isn't it? Christ, my brain's falling out of my ears. Good morning, guys. Just on my way to Shoreditch House to do some work before going to the gym. Woken up with a third cold sore, like above this one. So painful and horrible. You can literally like see how swollen my bottom lip is. It feels great. I feel great. Thrilled about it. Um, I've got quite an important meeting today. Uh, and also a rest day and then dinner with a friend. But first I need to do some work. This jumper's new by the way. It was one of my birthday presents from the men's architecture department. I like it a lot. Um, it's a beautiful morning as you can probably tell. Very wintry and frosty and lovely and sunny. Um, Great time to walk around looking like you've been punched in the mouth. Hello guys. In the exact same place I started vlogging last time I saw you. Much time has passed though, very much. Did all of my work things. Went back home. Now I'm on my way back out to Shortage House for the Wi-Fi. And to do some more work. Edit this vlog, get it uploaded, and just reply to some emails. It's just a lot quicker. So, so I'm doing it. So it's still a lovely evening. Still look like I've been punched in the mouth. Um, booked my Tokyo flights today, which was so exciting. Um, 
So I'm going on the 4th of December, land there on the 5th. Sorry, I'm eating a mint, which is annoying. And then, um, I still need to book my accommodation. I asked on Instagram where's best to stay. So I'm gonna get that booked by the end of this week. Any other recommendations? I know there are so many, let me know. I've got so many people sending me lists of things to do, places to see. So I'm so excited, I can't wait to be there. The only thing I feel anxious about with it is that the time difference means that like I'm gonna be really, really, really on my own in that I can't ring mum, message Lynn's or whatever, whoever, because um, daytime there is like, <laughs> it's like fully night time here, Jesus Christ. Um, okay, I don't know if you witnessed all of that. There's a boy jumping over a car and skateboarding. Anyway, um, so what's to say? Oh yeah, so the daytime in Tokyo is nighttime here because of the time difference. So like, I'm really on my own. If I'm feeling a bit rubbish or lonely, I won't be able to call somebody, but it also feels like a huge step out of my comfort zone, which is always a good thing. And you know what, it's a week. If I'm there and I struggle spending that much time on my own, it's a week. It's really not that long. I might try and find like a group tour that goes out to Kyoto or maybe I don't know just out of the city a little bit so that on that day I know I'd be seeing people I've got lots of people who are like I'm gonna set you up on a for dinner with my mate or whatever so I know there will be people to see and I won't I won't like have a week without socializing with anybody um but yeah I want to like document the whole thing with you guys obviously and so I think part of that is talking about the things that I worry about when I'm traveling alone not worried about safety at all when I'm there but I haven't heard anything that makes you think otherwise. I was speaking to a friend earlier over email who said if you drop money on your phone, people will chase down after you through the street to give it back. Um, so yeah. Anyway, I can't walk, talk, and eat a mint. It's just too much, so I'm gonna have to check in later. Morning guys, it's Thursday. I promise this this vlog will be live soon. And then I've got another mental day. I'm so stressed. <laughs> so stressed and try not to. One second, let me just put some knickers on. There we go, I've got my knickers on. Um, I'm so stressed out. I didn't sleep last night. I was so much on, so much in my head. I'm like, ah, please stop. Um, I am um, got a really nice day today though. I'm going to I'm going to the jigsaw press day first to see my friend Kim. I think I just flashed you my knickers then. I'm really sorry. I mean I'm not bothered about anyone seeing my knickers, but that was a really weird thing to have done, so sorry about that. Um, um I'm at press day and then I'm going to a dinner with um a lunch with Monica Veneda for International Women's Day. This it's just sounds like it's gonna be amazing and I think I have to wear something nice for it. I don't feel like I can show up in dirty trainers, but I'm kind of at a point where I literally can't get dressed in the morning at the moment. I just don't know what to bloody wear. So I'm gonna try and decide now with, with you guys here. Um, I also really need to get a new dressing gown. This one is so stained and gross. It is clean, I promise, but it just doesn't look it. It's grim. Okay, I've gone with toe-tem jeans, Dior boots, because I can walk in these all day long, um, a jumper from Gap, which is new, I'll talk about in my monthly fashion thing, the Under the Stories Long Sleeve t-shirt I showed you earlier in this vlog, uh, my toe-tem jacket, and then the row jumper over my shoulders. I feel like I look relatively wintry and also relatively smart and classy, and yeah. This is what we're going with. Six in the world. Yeah. Literally the world. Yeah. I was like, that's probably quite extreme, but I believe it. And then... ...the last years of Iraq and Syria. This included the outstanding new special attempt, most aware, trapped by an ISIS firefight. Barbara and her colleagues have forced to shelter for more than 28 hours in a civilian house in East Mosul. More recently, Barbara has been reported from the front line on the Turkey North Syria war and has flown over from Istanbul, especially to be in the court of the Please give her. <laughs> 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 
I was lucky enough to sit next to you during lunch. Um, I'm going to start by asking you uh, some questions. We may have time to take one of yours at the end. Um, my route into journalism was unconventional. Uh, law, I dabbled in, followed by a few slides. Then I landed on journalism, and that was because I just didn't see anyone like me represented on certainly on TV growing up. How and why did you get into journalism? Well, there were a lot of people who looked like me. There's a lot of blondes out there. I'm not knocking that though, but mine was also. Guys, I'm just coming here to sign off the vlog really quickly. And um, the Monica Veneda lunch was so good. It was just, yeah, it was so special and so interesting. And like uh, one of those like amazing pinching moments for my job to get to go to stuff like that. But yes, I just need to finish editing this vlog. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.